Okay, welcome back, Allen High School Pre-AP kiddos. We're talking about molar mass, and uh, what we wanna do is some more calculations with these and how we use this in dimensional analysis and when it might be necessary to really think of molar mass as a formula. Now, if we thought of it as a formula, the molar mass, mm, and now remember we can use that for atoms, formula units, molecules, whatever we want, is the mass in grams, and n is equal to a mole. Okay, that's the symbol we use. It's not a unit. That's the symbol we use in a mathematical equation. Now, if I rearrange this for moles, because this is going to be very handy, moles are also equal to mass divided by molar mass. Now, what we're going to be asking of you, because eventually we're going to work our way into multi-step problems, is only use your formula when your molar mass is your unknown. Maybe you have some sort of unknown substance. Other than that, so you're going to use the formula if your molar mass is the unknown, but if mass or moles are the unknown, we're going to stick with dimensional analysis. So let's work a few more of these. So we have question mark moles are equal to 28.7 grams, and we have lithium nitrate, which means you have to be able to do two things. First off, write the formula of lithium nitrate, L-I-N-O-3, plus 1, minus 1. And secondly, you have to be able to look these up on the periodic table and find the molar mass of the substance. And for now, I'm going to move on along with this video, assuming you can do that, those two things. If you can't, you need to come visit your consultant so I can help you out. So we always start opposite the question mark. And remember, we're going to be dealing with grams and moles and moles and particles. Now, particles are a count. Uh, we're not dealing with that right now. We're starting here and we're going here. But it, it never hurts to kind of lay out that map. All right, so we've got 28.7 grams of lithium nitrate. I want to eliminate grams, so I'm going to put them in the denominator. I want moles. For every one mole, I have 68.95 grams. Now I got that by looking up one lithium, one nitrogen, and three oxygens. Okay, spell that out a little bit so it doesn't look like a zero. All right, now grams cancel. If I do my multiplication, and you can plug it into your calculator just like this. This number times parentheses, one divided by that, close your parentheses if you want. Just be very careful if you don't use parentheses that every time you divide, you hit your equal sign. 4.16 moles of lithium nitrate. Okay, let's try another one. How many moles, question mark moles, are equal to 100.0 grams of your aluminum sulfate. Now, if you look up two aluminums, three sulfurs, and 12 oxygens, right, you'll get a molar mass, and that's our conversion factor. We find that there are 342.15 grams equal to one mole, right? You would write the molar mass as 342.15 grams per mole. This is what we would put for our unit for molar mass. You can't just put grams, you have to put grams per mole. But when we have a slashed unit, we can set it up as an equivalency. So I have 100.0 grams, four sig figs, and this time I'll use the railroad. So I'm going to set up my railroad. I know it's one step because mass to moles use molar mass. I have grams. I want to eliminate grams and go to moles. For every one mole, though there's a one in front of the mole, I have 342.15 grams. And we want this to four sig figs, 0 0.2923 grams of aluminum, or excuse me, that's wrong in the notes again, moles of aluminum sulfate. Must have done some cutting and pasting there, not fixed it, sorry about that. 
All right, let's keep forging ahead. Oh, this time we have moles. 1.34 moles of water are equal to how many grams of water? And we've seen it before. There are 18.02 grams of water for every one mole. Now, if you were to report the molar mass, you'd likely report it as 18.02 grams per mole. Don't forget, you have to include that whole thing as your unit for a molar mass. Now, mass and moles use molar mass. Start opposite your question mark. 1.34 moles. Now, I'll use the parenthesis method for those of you who like that better. This time I have moles in the numerator. I want to eliminate them. So I'll put moles in the denominator and I want grams. Well, what the molar mass of water tells me is there's one mole will involve 18.02 grams. Moles cancel. If I do my math, this times that, multiply in everything in the numerator, you get 24.1 grams of water. It's really best to write what you're talking about because pretty soon we'll go from one substance to another substance. Ooh, now the this one's a tricky one. Remember I said for every quiz and every test, you want to do a quick little brain dump from now until pretty much the end of the year. And you can do Brinklehoff or I bring clay for our new house or 7, 7 plus hydrogen is 7. Remember, oxygen is diatomic. There's two of them. Uh, if we didn't want diatomic oxygen, we would say in the question, atomic oxygen. So there's 2.80 moles is equivalent to how many grams? So let's get up a little railroad for this. Mass to moles use molar mass, so it's only one step. I have 2.8. Remember, we start opposite our question mark. I want to eliminate moles, and I want grams. Sometimes it's helpful to set up your unit cancellation and before you even think about numbers. Well, there are two oxygens. They each have a mass of 16. So the molar mass of oxygen is 32 grams per mole, or we could write this as 32 grams is the mass for every one mole. So I want a 1 in front of the mole and a 32 in front of the grams. My moles cancel, and assuming this algebra is right, we get 89.6 grams of O2, oxygen, right? One, two, three sig figs, one, two, three sig figs. Final answer. Oh, wow, on this one, you might want to phone a friend. Well, fortunately, I am your friend, okay? And so let's take a look at this example. I have some sort of an ionic compound, all right? And so it asks what the formula mass is. Well, all I used is formula because it's ionic. That's the same thing as asking what the molar mass is. Molar mass encompasses all of those terms. And remember, when molar mass is your unknown, I, you really need to use the formula. There's really no way to do this by dimensional analysis. So the molar mass is your mass per moles. Now mass has to be in grams, and I have grams, so I don't have to convert that. So I have 47.4 grams for every 1.185 gram or moles. You can think of this this way, right? The molar mass is a certain number of grams for every one mole. And so we can really think of it as a proportionality. And we're solving for those grams or the grams per one mole. And if you did that algebra, you would get 40.0 grams 
You can't leave it as grams because it asked for the molar mass. You have to put per mole, 40.0 grams per mole. This had three sig figs. This has four sig figs. Remember, we go with the fewest with multiplication and division. All right, let's try one more. This might give us an unknown. So we're on 9-11. So I have 256 grams. Now it says it's monatomic. That means we're not dealing with I bring clay for our new house or bring all half or 777, however you want to think of it. So I have uh, 356 grams and I have 8.26 moles of the element. Since we are asked for the molar mass, well, actually, let me backtrack. It asks us what element we have. Now, we don't have any information on atomic number, but the molar mass, as long as we know it's an element and not a compound, the molar mass should be characteristic. We should be able to identify an element based on that. So my molar mass is 256 grams for every 8.26 moles. Remember, if your molar mass is your unknown, you, you really need to do formula, not dimensional analysis. And I get 30.99 grams per mole. I'm not really worried about sig figs right now because the question didn't ask me what the molar mass was. It asked what the element was. Now, if you look at the periodic table, within reasonable experimental error, we would find that it's phosphorus is the most likely element for our little unknown equation there. All right, we're going to continue, but next time we're going to look at the other part of our map. So we've done mass to moles, use molar mass, and now we want to use moles to counting. So we're going to be counting either formula units or molecules or atoms if it's pure element. You'll see why I have to make that distinction later, okay? So until then, this is signing off.